Good morning traders, Joseph here from ACAL. Welcome to this week's Trade View Outlook. So if you um, did uh, attend um, Trader Fest uh, over the weekend, I hope it was a good experience and that you learned something new from uh, the guest speakers that we had. So this week we have a pretty solid week coming up in data. Uh, there's a fair bit of uh, news coming out. It's going to be a lot busier than last week. And it includes, um, you know, several uh, central bank meetings as well so so far this morning we're seeing uh, a pretty uh, a pretty standard asian session open it's been pretty flat we are seeing some small declines against the yen after some strong uh, gains to end last week we're also seeing some small gains against the usd as well even though the dollar index is trading slightly higher uh, all oil hasn't come online yet but we have seen a rallying uh, last week and the dow the US 30 slash the Dow. So it continued um, its winning ways. We are seeing a little bit of selling today, but we did see more gains on uh, Friday and it continues to push that best rally since 2017. This week they are uh, looking at the Fed to uh, raise rates once again. So we'll see what type of effect that has on uh, indexes. So on Thursday, we saw a pretty sharp decline on the NASDAQ and we saw a bit more selling um, on Friday late in the session. It was a, a very steep pullback. Uh, we can see that attempted counter rally. So even though we are seeing that decline here, things still look pretty good for the uh, NDX 100 and we'll just continue to watch it. So obviously there's no buy screaming right now, but we do have this very firm trend and we'll see if buyers can start to uh, create some sort of support area and potentially show a uh, push higher. But with interest, with the interest rate decision coming and the Fed statement, it might be good just to uh, wait and see what's sort of on the horizon and how the uh, Fed are seeing things. So as said, they are expected to raise rates, continue to uh, raise rates maybe by two times. So we'll see what comes out of that meeting. So we'll go over the news in a minute, but over the weekend, um, crypto wise, we've seen a uh, pretty flat weekend, but we did see Bitcoin move back above uh, that 30,000 point over the, on Sunday. And this morning we are seeing a little bit of selling, but we are springing off lows at the stage in the morning. So Ripple was probably one of the ones that did see a pretty decent decline over the weekend. So um, we see these two bars here. That was after last week, it did move back into the 80s once again. So we will see how the market continues to uh, handle these you know, these new higher prices it's sitting at and if we will see uh, a little bit more support come in and a bit more demand. It was, I was hoping to see a little bit more demand over the end of the week and the weekend but for now sellers have been uh, pushing lower but there is a fair bit of rejection uh, on this buy here that was seen yesterday so we'll see if that can continue to pick up during uh, this week. Some of the other cryptos we did touch on last week uh, was ADA. So ADA even though it did stall after this what did look like a potential continuation it's formed a new high low and we're seeing a new move higher on sunday and there's a little bit for now it looks uh quite positive on a buy on the bullish side but we will need to see a break of this high and uh, a new move to close higher so some of the other markets to keep an eye on this week obviously is gold Gold finished the week uh, lower last week, but it still is sitting in this nice up leg and we'll look to see if it can find a new high low and uh, maybe push higher. There might be some pressure though if um, the dollar does continue to see a boost from uh, the comments from coming out from um, the Federal Reserve. So things could be choppy depending on how the dollar uh, reacts to that later in the week. So the other ones as well are gonna be the currencies this week. So we have a fair bit of uh, data coming out. So we start with the flush data and um, looking at the euro at the moment, um, it is in a bit of a corrective phase in this up leg. So it's still, we're still leaning maybe towards the bullish side, but if we do see another break lower, that will be a, a bit of a worry for this trend here. And we'll see if our buyers can find some sort of support to push higher from. And um, the yen's gonna be a big one this week as well. We'll get into that to a moment, but we start today with uh, from 515 with the uh, French um, manufacturing services PMI data then we have the German uh, data coming out the EU data and then we have the UK and finally the US data so 
they normally don't produce too many um, major surprises, but definitely in the uh, German and the French, we'll be looking to see uh, how that data comes out. And as we progress through the week, we have uh, CB Consumer Confidence on Wednesday. So Tuesday is a, a bit of a break, and then we have AUD uh, CPI, and that's very important in terms of the Aussie at the moment with that employment data coming out much stronger than expected last week. There's still a lot of interest rate worries, but uh, again, it's going to be really down to what the dollar's doing, as we can see here, that decline. Uh, if the dollar does come off, we would expect it to the, the Aussie to rebound. Uh, but there could be short-term rebounds, even though we saw a basically a downtrend. That was that uh, employment data last week, which lifted the Aussie very, um, gave it a really good boost uh, after that employment data. So. On the short term, you might see some ticks up even if momentum continues to push it down with the dollar rising. But that's CPI data for Australia. So they're looking for on the quarter 1%, so down from 1.4. And they're looking for the yearly to come in slightly lower at 5.5 after around the last 5.6. And the trimmed mean CPI on the quarter, they're looking for 1.1 lower than the last 1.2. So if there are any jumps to the upside, that will help the, the Aussie. But again, it will come down really to uh, how uh, the dollar is tracking and um, often, and then secondary how uh, commodity prices as well. So moving into Thursday, so 4 a, Thursday is the big day next week. So early Thursday morning at 4 a.m. our local time, uh, we have the interest rates coming out for the FOMC so the, and the statement. So the funds rate is expected to be increased to 5.50% and we'll be looking to see what comes out from uh, the statement. Then at 10.15 that night, uh, we have the EU central bank meeting as well. So the refinancing rate is expected to, to increase to 4.25% and uh, the policy statement will be uh, of uh, major interest to uh, traders as we uh, try to work out what's next for, and how they're seeing uh, see inflation at the moment in the uh, EU. So it, this uh, continues on. Uh, we have advanced GDP from the US. They're looking for one percent, one point seven percent. So that also is one to watch. And then Thursday, obviously, uh, employment cl unemployment claims coming out. Uh, the press conference is uh, following that. And then Friday we have a you know more news coming out. And um, this time we have uh, the Bank of Japan. So the policy rate is expected to remain the same, but the policy statement and the outlook. Report Report and how they and what's their position on uh, their bonds at the moment? I think that's going to be the real key factor, and that's where we've seen some of the really uh, volatile moves coming out from these meetings from the Bank of Japan. So we know we have a new governor in place um, with slightly different tones. So traders uh, will be looking to see what comes out of those comments, and then what is their um, you know their positioning on the on their bond portfolio as well. So looking at some of the yen pairs, we have seen the yen selling down. Uh, uh, from last week and we have seen some pretty good movements against the yen uh, from uh, risk currencies so the dollar if things go well for the dollar this week and um, we see the yen get some you know if we see some really sharp moves down from the yen the dollar could be the dollar yen could be a key one this week uh, to watch so all of them are usually pretty exciting, but the dollar might be uh, one of, of you know solid interest. Same with the euro as well. So those two could be two ones definitely to keep an eye on on Friday if uh, we do see some surprise news coming out of the Bank of Japan. Now to wrap things up on uh, Friday, uh, we have uh, Canadian GDP and we have the core PCE price index out of the US. They're looking for a decrease down to 0 0.2, so that's another inflationary uh, data piece. And then we have um, the employment cost index out of the US as well. So they're looking for a decrease to 1.1%. And then we have a revised UOM consumer sentiment uh, at uh, midnight uh, local time on uh, Saturday. Saturday morning. So there's going to be a few things to watch out for this week. Obviously, the the USD is one to watch. Uh, stock indexes will be one to watch as well on Thursday after the uh, FOMC statement with the dollar, and then Friday uh, to, and the euro as well. But I think the real mix will be if we get any surprises uh, from the Bank of Japan and just exactly what how the Fed see things at the moment and um, how that affects the dollar, and then what do we see the dollar do? And do we see continued momentum? 
carry forward in this new rally that's been formed or are we going to see any surprises and we see some uh, selling come back into the picture and then how will that affect risk markets including our stock indexes so that's um today's update so we'll see how things work out this week it should be a pretty exciting week and um thank you very much for your time this morning i hope you have a fantastic week all the best of your trading and uh, keep an eye out for our updates as they uh, come out throughout the week so thanks again for your time and have a great day and enjoy your week thanks and bye for now